This lecture is specific to physics AB. We take a look at a kinematics problem involving simple harmonic motion with a phase shift included. So let's go ahead and access the example. Please go ahead and write it down into your notes. Okay, and SHO has a position function that is given by the following. It's much the same function as we've already seen in a couple of other problems, but we've added into it a phase shift. Here is that function. Okay, so position as a function of time is given to us as the following. Like so, in terms of meters. Okay, and then in the function, we have much the same values as we've already seen in other examples. That is, first of all, the amplitude A is three meters. Okay, omega, the angular frequency is pi over four radians per second, and therefore the period is once again eight seconds. But now we have this phase angle here of pi and the positive sign in front of it. Here's then how we begin to read the shortcut. First of all, the plus sign means a shift to the left. This ultimately comes from trigonometric identities. And then the amount that we shift by is pi radians by this amount. Okay, now pi radians, what fraction of two pi radians is that? Well, it's just a half. So what I have to do is I have to shift my graphs one half of the way. So we shift by pi over two pi. In other words, I like to think of it as what fraction of two pi radians is the phase angle that we're given, and this is equal to one half. So this is something that we can easily do by hand. So with these numerical examples that I'm doing in lecture here, such as this, we can do these types of problems by hand. I encourage you to become proficient in doing so when you have an easy phase angle to work with. Sometimes if you have a decimal, what you have to do is you ultimately just have to graph it out on a graphing calculator, and that's perfectly fine if you know how to do that, but I do encourage you to learn how to do these simple types of problems by hand, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, let's go ahead and graph out this function before we get to the velocity and the acceleration. In order to do what I always do off to the side is I draw for myself a little cosine curve that I call a shortcut graph. So here's a cosine curve. Okay, I'm gonna be shifting this cosine curve to the left-hand side, so I'm not gonna bother drawing it over here. And then I have to figure out where pi radians is, which is just one half of the way. Well, this right here is a full two pi radians, so then therefore halfway is pi radians, and that's this point here. So what I then have to do is take this graph and shift it to the left-hand side until that point lies on the vertical axis. When I do, I'm shifting the entire cosine curve by pi radians to the left. So now let's go ahead and draw that out. Okay, so time in seconds, position in terms of meters, and now using a different color, let's go ahead and begin our graph with this point here on the vertical axis. So from here, to here, like so, we end up back where we started. That's a full oscillation. So this right here is the period of eight seconds, and then these points, positive and negative, like so, are the amplitude positions of three and minus three, like so. And now we use this exact same strategy, this shortcut, if you will, when it comes to the velocity and the acceleration. So let's now take a look at the velocity expression. Okay, so the velocity equation, is going to be negative a times omega times the sine of the argument, like so. And the phase angle is once again pi radians. And so now what I have to do in terms of a drawing is I have to take a negative sine curve and shift it to the left one half of the way, that is by pi radians. Once again, I draw off to the side for myself a shortcut graph. So in this case, what I'm gonna be drawing here is just a negative sine curve, which recall from trig looks like this, and then I just have to figure out where one half of the way is. Well, one half of the way is obviously this point right here, so if I take this point and then shift it to the left-hand side until it's on the vertical axis, I'm then shifting by pi radians. And now I start my graph with this point right here on the vertical axis. So let's go ahead and draw that. Okay, so time in seconds and then velocity in terms of meters per second. And now I start with this point here on the vertical axis. So using a different color, that then gives us this like so. Once again, we draw out here one full oscillation. So this is the period of eight seconds. And then here and here are the maximum speeds, plus and minus respectively, of three pi over four radians. 
like so. And then lastly, we do this process for the acceleration. Okay, so first of all, the function, the acceleration is negative a omega squared cosine of the argument, like so, ultimately in terms of meters per second squared. And now in terms of a shortcut, what I have to draw here, first of all, is a negative cosine curve, which will then shift to the left by pi radians. So once again, I draw a little shortcut graph first, like so. So here's a negative cosine curve, and then I just have to figure out where one half of the way is. Okay, pretty obviously that's this point right here. So I then take this point and shift it until it's on the axis. When I do, I'm shifting by pi radians to the left-hand side. And then this last graph is as follows. So time in seconds, acceleration in terms of meters per second squared. And now I start my graph with this point here on the vertical axis. That then gives me this, like so. Once again, you always graph out here one full oscillation. So this is the period of eight seconds. And then here and here is the maximum value of the acceleration plus and minus respectively of three pi squared over 16 meters per second squared, like so. Here's an easy way to check yourself at this point in the problem. Notice that the acceleration graph is just the negative of the position graph. And the reason for that is because the position is ultimately a cosine and the acceleration is a negative cosine. This will always be the case. The two graphs will be negatives of each other regardless of what the value of the phase shift is. Okay, let me do a little bit of erasing here. Let's kind of clean up my boards a little bit for the remainder of the example. Okay, now, for the next portion of the problem, it says, when is the oscillator at a position x of positive 2 meters? And then we'll find the velocities and accelerations at those times, and then mark their points on their respective graphs. Okay, so let's take a look at our position graph. Right here is a position of positive 2 meters, so then therefore we have to find these two moments in time. So I'm going to do so by taking my function here, setting the position x equal to 2, and then just solving for t. So let's go ahead and do that process. Like so. And now to solve for t, the first step is gonna to be to divide the three to the other side. Then we take the inverse cosine of both sides, like so. And now in radian mode on my calculator, I'll do the remainder here of the algebra for us. Okay, so inverse cosine of two thirds, Okay, and then I subtract pi, and then I multiply by four and divide by pi when cross-multiplying here to solve for t. Now, here's what pops up on my calculator. I'll call this t1. It's negative 2.93 seconds. Okay, all that the negative sign means is that I'm over here on the vertical side of the axis, or the left-hand side, rather, of the vertical axis. And so then, therefore, what do I add to that to get over here to the right-hand side? I don't add two pi radians. This is a time in seconds. I have to add instead a full period of eight seconds. So let's go ahead and add eight seconds to that. So plus eight, and that then ends up being 5.07 seconds. So then therefore, which of the two times that I find? Well, the halfway point like so is four seconds. So then therefore I found this time here, that's my time T1. And now I can use, once again, a symmetry argument here to find the time t2. So here's then how I'll go about doing that. This distance, if you will, on this graph is the same thing as this distance here. So then therefore, this distance here is eight minus 5.07 seconds. That is then therefore this value here. So I'm gonna say by symmetry, the second time t2 is eight minus 5.07, so then therefore that works out to be 2.93. So let me just double check that. Eight minus 5.07 is in fact 2.93 seconds. Like so. So that's this point here. This is my point t2. Okay, and now let's find the velocities and accelerations at these times and then mark their positions on their graphs. Okay, so down here now, what we have to find is, first of all, V of, let's see, we've got 2.93 and V of 5.07. 
So I should get the same number for both of these, but one positive and one negative. And then as you'll see, usually the trickiest part of this problem is marking the points on this graph correctly. Well, let's go ahead and get the numbers first. So let's do 2.93 first. So plugging in, I have negative three times pi over four times the sine of pi over four times 2.93 plus then pi. And this then works out to be about 1.76 meters per second, I should get the negative value of this for the other time. So let's see if I do. So negative three times pi over four times sine of pi over four plus, or excuse me, times, there we go, 5.07 and then plus pi. Okay, good. Negative 1.76 meters per second. You should get the same number out several decimal spaces for these two values. If you don't, you did something incorrectly with the math earlier in the example. So this is another way to check yourself at this point in the problem. Okay, let's go ahead and mark these positions here, or these points rather, on the velocity graph. So first of all, a velocity of 1.76 meters per second. That's up here somewhere, like so. And then the question becomes the following. Where is the 2.93 seconds? Is it here on the left or is it here on the right? It's here on the right. This is the time T2. And the reason for that is as follows. Think of the ruler as the equilibrium position and we're given that the position itself is a positive two meters. We're to the right hand side of the equilibrium position. Therefore the spring force and then therefore the acceleration, which is always back towards equilibrium, is to the left. It's a negative number. Notice that on this velocity as a function of time graph, right there at that moment in time, the derivative, the slope of the ruler's edge, the acceleration is a negative number. That wouldn't be the case over here. Watch this same occurrence occur. Watch this also occur for this value of 5.07 seconds. So we have negative 1.76 meters per second. That's down here somewhere. And then therefore 5.07 seconds. Is it here on the left or here on the right? It's here on the left for the exact same reason. Because at this point right here, we have a negative tangent line slope. That's the acceleration, which is negative, as it is right here. So marking these points on the velocity graph is probably the trickiest part of the problem. The remainder of the example, however, is straightforward. Let's go ahead and find those negative accelerations for these two times. So we go over to here, we plug then into the acceleration function our two times, and when I do, I should get the same negative number. So let's see if we do. All right, so first of all, the 2.93 seconds, so negative three times pi squared over 16 times cosine of pi over four times then 2.93 plus pi. Okay, so after all of that, I end up with negative 1.23 meters per second squared. I should get the same number for the other time. Okay, so negative three times pi squared over 16 times cosine pi over four times 5.07 plus pi, close parentheses. And sure enough, I get the same number, negative 1.23 meters per second squared. So negative 1.23 is down here somewhere. So then therefore the two times T2 and T1 are as follows. Once again, a nice way to check yourself is to note that the acceleration graph is just the negative of the position graph. Okay, that concludes the kinematics of simple harmonic motion.